all have our demons. I have mine, you have yours, Adam has his. It's how we deal with our demons that shapes who we are as people. I'm on the way to pick up Adam Savage, and we're going to talk about overcoming addiction. I've known Adam for many years, and he's earned my respect. I've known him as a radio personality here in Farmington, New Mexico, where he's been on the air since 1993. You've probably heard him on 96.9 The Dog Rocks. While I already knew Adam and some of his history, I recently learned something valuable about Adam. His heart is what drives him forward. He cares more about others than he does for himself. It's what drove him to overcome his substance abuse. It's what drives his behavior as a clean, sober, responsible member of society. And it's what drives how he treats others. Spend some time near Adam and you'll likely find him quiet and reserved. Prove you're worthy of his heart and he'll go to the ends of the earth for you. I wonder if we can get him to tell us some of what he's gone through in his life, the good and the bad. Want to see how it goes? Come along for the ride in Ken's Think Tank. Adam is absolutely no stranger to radio studios, but just like all the rest of my guests, he's never been in a studio that was also a truck. <laughs> So I took some time to chill him around mine. And you know what? I've said it before. I'll keep saying it over and over and over again. I got my truck at 505 Motorsports. Why? Because they're awesome there. If you want one of the most fair car buying experiences you will ever have, go to 505 Motorsports. Clay gave me an absolutely killer deal on this truck. So go by, see them. It's worth your while. Ready for coffee? Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely, always. We are picking you up from what used to be Clear Channel. I keep wanting to call it Clear Channel, but it's I, not Clear I, I, Channel anymore. I like to call it Clear Channel. So it's really iHeart. Is it iHeart Radio? It's iHeart Media. iHeart iHeart Media is kind of like the the top of the right, you know, thing. But the, it runs under the umbrella of of iHeart Media, and we do obviously iHeart Radio. You've been on the radio here for a while. Been on the radio here since 1993, <laughs> wow. since April 19th of 1993, which is not what I had planned. Amazingly enough, um, I had kind of, uh, I had kind of thought that it would be a, a slight interlude. <laughs> I was, I was planning interlude, and I got, you know, the whole package. Right. And, um, but it's been good to me, you know. Farmington been very, very good to me, and uh, I like it. It's it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, comparatively, you know, uh, you don't get shot. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably. Right. Um, and I got shot two times when I was living in um, Minneapolis. Dude. I was living in the big city. Yeah. That's yeah. approximately. I got twice as many times as a person should be shot. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. I got shot on the interstate one night, deep in the night, and um, some guy just came up beside me and flashed a gun at me, and um, and he had a much faster car than me, so I, uh, and this is a the first big window into my real personality, and um, he was just playing with me like a cat and a mouse. I, I couldn't yeah. get, you know, I couldn't get away by accelerating and the whole nine yards. So finally I just reached across and I rolled down the window and I started yelling at him, just shoot me then. Go ahead, shoot me. Shoot me, I dare you, shoot me. Go ahead. And he did. <laughs> oh my Don't God. ask for somebody to shoot you because most times they'll shoot. They <laughs> <It> just might. <laughs> and so he shot me. He shot at the car. And um, in the Toyota Tercel I was driving, there's a, 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 a thing that goes down the middle of the door. Oh, right. And it hit that solid part and just the energy all spun out of the bullet. Okay. Hi, good. How are you? Doing great. What can we get started for you? What would you like? Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. How about you? No, I'm good. Who's a good boy? <laughs> I want a, uh, I want a, um, 
uh, just like regular coffee with um, some almond milk in it and a Splenda. Okay, and is that hot? Well, you can put a couple ice cubes in it because it's like too hot for baby. <laughs> uh, mocha with um, no, whip, no whipped cream. No whipped cream? Yeah. Uh, same, like medium size, 16. And that's hot. Something like that. What's that? That's hot. Of course. Because it's not quite hot enough out that's here. That's hot. <laughs> that's hot. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Appreciate it. I wore a colored shirt today just for you. I wore a, I wore a shirt today just for you. <laughs> I put a shirt on. So were both of these in Minneapolis? Yes. And that's where you went to uh, broadcast school, right? Yeah, I went to broadcast school. I was um, I was in a band before that, and um, you know, '80s hair so band. You were you were the front man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And people nice. people would freak out. We'd be setting up, and they'd think I was the drummer. <laughs> and then I, you know, get up in the uh, to the mic, and people would be like, "Wait, what? You're the bass player?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, no." And then I'd start singing, and and they would all be like, "Oh, wow. Well, okay, we can." We'll right, be alright with this for a while. My sister and my brother, uh, thanks to them, uh, they suggested that I go to broadcast school, and I had two friends that had already been, and so uh, my brother lived in St. Paul, and uh, which is, you know, literally, uh, it's between Minneapolis and St. Paul, they make a big deal about the Twin Cities. It's a, It's literally a street. Right. You go across the street, yeah. and you're in Minneapolis. And yeah. so, yeah, I went to I went to Brown, I went to Brown uh, Institute of Technology, Sweet. and uh, I learned how to do the broadcast. I have a degree in broadcasting, awesome. Which uh, you know, it's, I've just been on the radio, but I got very, very fortunate with that. I was unbelievably very, uh, very fortunate, um, and I got to do something that nobody gets to do and I got to start my career in Minneapolis on the air full time and that that's just not heard of yeah, I mean that's big city stuff so that's a big market mm -hmm. yeah it was number 12 I believe when I started wow yeah big so station it's pro so probably your success in that probably has more to do with your personality than the training that you got right correct yeah yeah yeah, my personality um, is a defense mechanism. Yeah. Um, I've been a big guy all my life, and um, you know, it's inevitable that you're going to get given the business because uh, because of your size, no sure. matter who you are, um, men, women, whatever, children. Mm -hmm. You know, I wonder how many times that's actually true. People that are in kind of public broadcast media careers that aren't really people, people. They're not people persons. It happens a lot. Yeah. It happens a lot from what I understand. Um, and that we're just hiding in a room. I mean, you've been in the room um, that I broadcast out of before. And yeah. um, it's four, four brick walls. And it's perfect. Four brick walls. <laughs> it's perfect. It's yeah. got, uh, there's a window. There's a window where I can see what's going on in the next studio. Right. But I never interact with um, Steve Wardstein in the next studio he does our uh sports talk right and um i i hear what he says and i laugh at it out loud or if he brings something up i'll actually talk about that sure um somebody once told me that one thing that i was really good at was making it seem like like that that wall wasn't there okay you know and just talking out loud like there's a bunch of people there in the room with me and I don't know I don't um, I don't try and do that I am so undeniably blessed by the universe um, you know I've I've survived a, a horrifying uh, addiction um, I've come back from that and you you know that's not a normal thing Right, so so I mean, let's talk about that. Okay, lots of people have that issue, you know. Yeah. Not everybody, oh, yeah. not everybody overcomes it, mm -hmm. and and you did. So, so what 
you know, what was going on there? I was hurting too many people. I was hurting so many people. Um, and I was hurting um, the ones that really, uh, the ones that really got to me. Um, uh, my girlfriend at the time, I could see the effect it was having on her son. And um, I felt so ashamed uh, that I was acting out these things in front of this little kid. That was one of them. Uh, and then the major, the biggest parts of it um, were my father. Okay. Um, I was killing him. I was killing him, my father and my mom. I was killing them with my behavior and they were so worried about me. You know, my friends kept looking and, and a friend confided in me. He said, I kept looking for you in the obits. Wow. And I, you know, being afraid, uh, looking for you in the obits because I was afraid that, that I would find that you were dead. Wow. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, my little boy, uh, you know, he, uh, he's not little or anything. Like, he wasn't little at the time. You know, there were things that just at one moment, one moment, it was a New Year's Eve, I believe it's 2006, um, I just looked around me at where I was in one moment, and I said, no, no more, no more, and that was, that was the end of it, right, um, after that point, I didn't, uh, I didn't do any more dope, and I was a intravenous, you know, drug user, Okay. So, I mean, I was full bore on. Uh, it, had, it had cost me my job. It had cost me everything. It had cost me my freedom. Uh, I was in jail for a while. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it took everything from me. And it still got my attention, you know. And then when, when it came to a focus, when it came to an edge, when everything hit rock bottom um, that was it I, I, I found a, a very meaningful saying that I love I'm gonna get I've got a lot of tattoos I'm gonna get this on me sometime um, and I'm paraphrasing but it says in rock bottom I found the foundation upon which I would build the rest of my life yeah and that's exactly what happened for me um, and uh, there was no religious epiphany there was no um there was no treat i didn't go to treatment i didn't go to you know i didn't go anywhere uh to get this done um i just said no okay and for uh, people ask me that all the time and they want to know what did you do did you did you pray or did you go to a treatment center or whatever and i just say i quit you know? So just mental fortitude, you just had enough, got to that point to where... I'd, I had had enough yeah. of, of hurting other people. I was so sick of hurting my dad and my son mm -hmm. and my brothers and my sister that I just had to stop, you know? And I was never, I knew I was never going to get up and you know, I was never going to get up, get out of it until I stopped. So I stopped. And um, within a very short amount of time, I got my job back. Uh, they trusted me, and, and I, you know, paid back their trust by being clean and sober. Right. Um, I, uh, I've, uh, you know, I've got a place of my own that I live. It's not a great place, <laughs> but you know, I've got a place of my own. Sure. I don't, I don't. Uh, I'm not a slave to dope anymore. I don't drink anymore. I don't, uh, you know, it's, right. it's very, very cool. Yeah. You know, I, I, I try and try and keep hold every day and it's not, it's not, uh, it's not all satin. It's not all this beautiful no, of course not. thing at all. Um, I still get, I never, I don't get tempted. I don't have, you know, a lot yeah. of people will talk about cravings. I don't have any cravings. Did you? Did you at first? Like, what was the most? Was it? Was it um, kind of the mental addiction or physical aspects of addiction to get over? There was nothing to get over. 
I didn't, I didn't lay around and pine for it. I didn't lay around and squirm on the floor holding my gut and, you know, like you see on TV. Okay. It so, was not a movie of the week. It so once you decided, then... When I said no, it was done. I'm, it was I done. probably slept a lot. Sure. But that, yeah, that, uh, maybe that was something that was a result. Of, but as far as, uh, you know, getting dope sick, I, I really didn't right. get dope sick. And I was, I, it, there was a lot of use. There was a lot of use. And thankfully, I still see friends from that life. And I, um, I love the fact that they're all still here. And they're doing well. And right. they're, you know, they're still my friends. You know, and, and because they're because they have also put those childish things aside. Right. You know. It's pretty sweet. I think the most important thing that about my about my uh, getting away from those behaviors is that I can be an example for other people. You're like a musical encyclopedia yeah so uh, we were having a discussion an argument <laughs> dare <laughs> say this weekend uh, somebody had brought up um, that uh, oh shoot they thought that what a five finger death punch yeah right yeah have they ever even in some closet that was never published maybe um, never released have they ever done a cover of yes. sound of silence oh no no they haven't okay no that was a band called disturbed yeah that's that was actually the really part funny part of it <laughs> yeah five five finger did a cover of bad company yeah yeah by bad company off the album i i don't bad company was it? Yeah. <laughs> was it? <laughs> Do you know who did a version of Sound of Silence? Yeah, Disturbed. The Bananarama. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I did not believe it. I looked it up. I listened to it. It's horrifying. What's in this? <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into the station right now and look that up. We spiked your coffee. Yeah. See that shit. Look up Bananarama. Sound of Silence. <laughs> And squirrel, look. <laughs> and um, ha ha ha. When I get hit, and I've been hit in traffic so many times. Don't say that. I have. Well, don't say that. No. <laughs> no. No. I, I say no. And I grabbed a piece of celery and walked out <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it took it was like less than 30 seconds and you know that was just it so now it's become the uh, the legend of the celery nice <laughs> and again the views of the other guy don't have anything to do with what ken thinks <laughs> i really said to that the sound of silence. <laughs> there, there might be a woman listening <laughs> Yeah, anybody that wants a date. I've got nothing going on. <laughs> I, I, seriously, i got nothing going on. So, um, yeah, yeah. Oh. Fun at least. <laughs> right? Oh. Dude, always a pleasure, man. Thanks. Thanks.